Hey guys, Brian Jones here, running for Congress in Florida's 8th District. I just got done working out, but I want to talk about something that I hear a lot about on the campaign trail, and that is Republican and Libertarian-minded voters screaming in the insert some three-letter agency, bureaucracy type of thing. And the one I want to talk about today is when I hear a lot of voters say, in the IRS, in the federal income tax. And while I fully support a lot of that, I don't really scream that on my campaign because if you just scream that nice three letter slogan, it doesn't do justice to the full solution. It's a, it's a snippet. It's the tip of the iceberg of what actually needs to happen. And while it's very catchy and it riles people's emotions, which is why it's so popular, it doesn't do justice to the full solution. And that's something that I want to advocate for here today. So let's talk about the actual solution if you were to, let's say, end the federal income tax. Now, you need some context and understanding for how the government spends money and makes money. So I'm going to get into that right now. So the government makes about $4.9 trillion this year. They spend about 6.3. Now, you already see the disparity. There's about a $1.5 trillion gap right there between what they're bringing in and what they're spending. 50 or roughly 52% of that $4.9 trillion they're going to bring in is through the federal income tax. That's the money that they take out of your paycheck and out of my paycheck every week, every two weeks, every month to make their money. Now, a lot of us say, well, look, the federal government is inefficient. They're spending more money. They're devaluing my money. We should stop funding them. And that's great. I fully support that. However, if you simply say, in the income tax or in this or in that, and you don't talk about the negative downstream consequences, then you're gonna create more problems than you actually solve. And that's something that I'm very big on on the campaign trail. And what do I mean by that? All right, let's run through this situation real quick. We already know how much money the federal government is bringing in. We know how much of a percentage of that is through the federal income tax. We know how much they're spending, okay? So let's just say next year, all the numbers hold the same, except that we abolish the federal income tax. So right off the bat, the federal government loses 50% of their income. So now instead of bringing in 4.9 or you know $5 trillion, now they're only bringing in half, two and a half trillion. They're still gonna spend that 6.3 because we've done nothing to curb that. So what's gonna happen if you do that is you're basically just gonna increase the gap between what they bring in and what they spend. So they're still gonna spend the way they want to, but now you've decreased the amount of money that they're actually bringing in. And all this is really gonna do is drive the debt up. So for a country that is currently $33 trillion in debt, we bitch and moan a lot about the debt and how we're spending $663 billion in interest payments alone. Now, what happens if you increase that gap between what we're bringing in and what we're spending without cutting down spending? Well, it's quite simple. All you're going to do is drive up the debt that much faster. So with a 4.9, 6.3, you know, income to spending ratio, you were already off by about one and a half trillion dollars. Well, if you cut that in half, now you're short anywhere from two and a half, three, let's call it maybe four trillion dollars. And before you know it, we're going to be looking down the barrel of 40 or maybe even 50 trillion dollars in debt. Now, instead of spending $663 billion on interest payments. Now we're spending a trillion, one and a half, two trillion dollars on interest. And all that money is, is lost money. All right. Money paid down on debt to interest is money that goes directly into the hands of the rich bankers who own the debt, foreign countries paying down treasury bonds and the people who own those treasuries. It's not investments in infrastructure, defense, homeland security, securing the borders, veteran affairs efficiency, Medicare, Medicaid. It's nothing for citizens. It's literally just pissed away money on interest. So this is why I'm really big on this because if you simply cut the federal income tax and you do nothing to curb spending, all you're gonna do is create more downstream problems than you actually saw, right? That's really all I wanted to hit on today. I've, I've already talked about this long enough, but just keep this in mind. When you hear people talk about in this, do this, do that, and they're not talking about the downstream ramifications or if there's other candidates simply pounding the table saying do this or do that, and all they're doing is puppeting the things they hear on the news, question them. Ask how. That's the biggest question that voters can answer. Ask your politicians, ask these influencers, ask the people that are spreading these messages, ask them how that really works. Ask them how it works downstream. You will quickly get to the bottom and realize that not everything is as golden as it sounds. Most things that people wanna advocate for actually will have negative downstream consequences unless you actually think through how to solve the whole problem. All right, thanks for listening.